hit me from places like Tel Aviv. Great software. Seriously, that's all you got? Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? Do we want to get into that? You can use DNA. Boy, those robots look cool performing. Okay. Let's get wild. <laughs> Although we can't get more wild than Nick, can't we? Um, so, I really hope that this says shalom and not fuck off or something like this. <laughs> As uh, my knowledge of your language is quite limited. But I know that your knowledge of my language is quite limited because this is my name, but you probably can't read it. You are just as confused as I was in your public transportation system <laughs> on the way here. Yeah. How am I supposed to figure out where to get off from the bus? So, my name is Bujidar, but you can't pronounce this. My f some of my friends call me Bojo, which is cool, but Bojo is not the same as Bozo. <laughs> and uh, to make it even easier for you, you can call me Buck. My old friends have been calling me Buck for 20 years, so this is before the time I was a software engineer. So presumably it has nothing to do with the quality of the code that I'm producing. So Buck is cool. I come from the great city of, oops. I come from the great city of Sofia in Bulgaria. Um, supposedly I know a thing or two about software. Um, and I'm a fanatical Emacs user. If there is a single takeaway from you for, for, uh, for you from this presentation, it is that Emacs is the one true editor that is going to bring balance to the source. And yeah, I do not care if you don't like Emacs, but I will appreciate if you give it a try. I work here, great company. They paid a lot of money for me to be here. Life in Tel Aviv is, is expensive, but you probably know this. And uh, what is most important for you, GIFs work under OS X. <laughs> and I'm very, very excited to be here for a multitude of reasons. First of all, originally I was supposed to give this talk at Yuruko a few, a few weeks ago. This was supposed to be the closing keynote. But I got appendicitis, and this is how I enjoyed the conference in a hospital in Bulgaria. Uh, this is also my very first time in Israel, in Tel Aviv. I found a lot of exciting places to explore. I met some new friends, some old friends. I discovered some favorite places. I love this fountain. I have no idea what it is, but it is so pretty. <laughs> and I discovered that I look really good in skirts. So I, I, I discovered a lot of things here. but. That's, uh, that's enough. There is going to be a serious part of this presentation. We are going to speak about Ruby 4.0. And I'm not on drugs, you know. Um, I, I realize that uh, some of you might be confused because, you know, I'm not on Ruby's core team. I uh, do not influence any of the decision that Mats and uh, his minions make about the future of Ruby. I'm well aware that he recently said that uh, we will aim to release Ruby 3 for the Olympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. And uh, seven months afterwards, he said, I, fe I feel that this was optimistic, and we are probably not going to release it by then. Um, on some of his recent talks, he, he made the several claims. Ruby is now mature. Um, we are going to build the things our users need instead of, instead of the things that they want. And th this is a claim that sounds really good on paper, especially if you back it up with uh, uh, a fancy quote by Henry Ford. But uh, I also find it really troubling because I if you're saying something like this and you expect us to believe you, you have to have a decent track record of innovation. And let's review the track record of recent Ruby innovation. I'm going to ignore the improvements uh, in MRI because I want to focus more on the language itself. Ruby the language is not the same as Matsy's uh, Ruby implementation. And uh, mo moreover, I I'd say that MRI is an extremely crappy virtual machine by any conceivable measure. You know, uh, discovering generational garbage collection 
15 years after everybody else doesn't constitute as a breakthrough innovation as far as I'm concerned. Um, for me, Ruby was always special because it was the language which allowed me to express my thoughts in a clear, concise, readable manner like the famous uh, Hello, uh, Hello World Ruby edition, three times do something, magic happens. So what happened in recent years? Ruby 2.0. We got keyword arguments, oh, breakthrough innovation. We got percent %i, I really wanted this. UTF-8 is now the default source file encoding. This was kind of neat. Refinements, the feature that nobody except Mats wanted, and to my knowledge, nobody has ever used. Um, I I'm pretty sure that everybody knows about refinements just uh, from watching Ruby presentations and reading blog posts, but who has used this? Ruby 2.1, rational and complex literals, so useful. Devs return a value. This was somewhat useful. Refinements are no longer an experimental feature, just as useless. Ruby 2.2, nada. There was absolutely nothing interesting pertaining to the language in this release. There were some VM improvements, some standard library improvements, but nothing in the language. Ruby 2.3, um, the most recent stable release, frozen strings, literals, pragma. This was useful, I'd say. Safe navigation operator. I can speak for one hour why this was an epic mistake. Um, Nick uh, pointed you in the right direction, but uh, you are not supposed to be solving issues uh, re re pertaining to the structure of the code by making it easier to write shitty code. Um, it, it's just misguided on every possible level. So. Recently, it was announced that Ruby 2.4 is going to be a major release with a ton of innovation. And the innovation so far is unify fixed num in, and big num into a single integer class. And we've added support for Unicode case mappings, which, would, uh, which should have been done five to seven years ago. I think that few people will disagree that recently Java has been innovating more. And to say that Java is innovating a lot is a stretch even for a British man like Ben to say. He's known to lie a lot. So be prepared for his talk. So what about Ruby 3.0? The, the um, release that Mats has been speaking about for five years. Um, very little is still known about it. It might include optional static typing. No, th this was recently rejected. It might have something called duck type inference but it might also not have it, so who knows? It might have better support for concurrent and parallel programming. Uh, recently, somebody was uh, throwing around the concept of guilds, and this is what I got when I googled guilds. I, I, I know many uh, much about the technical details of guilds, but I find it really odd that with so many established concurrency paradigms around, you start inventing something new, especially given the fact that you never managed to provide anything meaningful in the realm of concurrency and uh, parallel programming support. Mats has announced the initiative 3 by 3 which means that Ruby 3 is going to be three times faster than Ruby 2. Um, he never mentioned how this is going to happen, so I'm re really doubtful that it is going to happen, but okay. And he mentioned that we are going to get rid of some quirky Ruby features, but he never mentioned which those features are going to be as well. So we've got a language without a release date, without uh, a roadmap, without anything. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, is this ever going to happen or is it going to be Duke Nukem forever? Um, Mats has repeatedly been saying that we are not going to repeat the mistakes Python 3 made. But I have to ask, and what about the Perl 6 mistakes? <laughs> uh, it, it seems to me that uh, by, by the time Ruby 3 is released, Ruby might have lost its relevance. And this is going to be really, really sad because I want to be invited in cool places like Tel Aviv, meet cool people like you and talk about Ruby, but th there is this slight chance that Ruby is going to die. However, I have a radical idea how to save Ruby, which is called Ruby 4.0. And uh, trust me, 4 is better than 3. 
I studied a lot of mathematics in high school and the university. I first uh, fixed the fundamental mistake for Ruby 3. It didn't have a code name. Ruby 4 has one. It's cool. And okay, you don't know Toy Story. <laughs> the first thing about Ruby 4 is the Ruby 4x4 4 4 initiative. Ruby 4 is going to be four times faster than Ruby 3. So it means it is going to be 12 times faster than Ruby 2, which means that Ruby 4 is finally going to be fast enough. And I'm not going to speak about the VM anymore, because Ruby 4 is going to be all about the language and the user experience, and maybe about the standard library. Who knows? The driving design principle number one for Ruby 4 is going to be continue to optimize for happiness, which means several things. First of all, add some useful stuff to the language, presumably things that the users really want and not things that you think that they might need. Um, recent years and the development of many new languages have convinced me that one such feature is immutable data structures. So we are going to have vector as a built-in uh, built structure, data structure, with a literal syntax looking like this. It is something like an array, but it's not array. It's persistent, it's efficient, and it encourages a functional style of programming. We're going to have an immutable hash with a literal syntax like this, so it's like a hash, but a persistent data structure. Cool feature. We are going to have immutable sets, which are going to look like this, and we also decided that sets are a really cool feature in general, so we are going to move the set class from the standard library to the core library. We are going to give it this literal syntax, and we are finally going to encourage people to use sets for, sets, uh, um, for set operations in instead of falling back to arrays, which is inefficient on many, many levels. This is going to be a deep and profound change to the way <laughs> to the way you experience Ruby. Yeah, I know that Nick is excited. Uh, he has been buying me beers for years, so I would accept his single valuable proposal to Ruby 4. <laughs> um, more importantly, Ruby 4 is going to feature static run typing and runtime contracts. And this is something that is very, very concrete. There is uh, one project that is not very wide, widely known in the Ruby community. It's called RDL. And it allows you to add static type information to a Ruby program like this. You can annotate a method. Uh, you can add uh, contracts like precondition, po post conditions, and you can add some really fancy uh, typing information. Uh, it, it is super, super fancy. It is proven to work, and it is 100% backward compatible. You can use the typing annotation. Uh, you you enable it as a library. There, there are flags to turn it on and off. And I, I believe that um, instead of coming up with some crazy ideas how to do um, static typing and contracts, we should just start going in the direction of something that we know for a fact is working. There is a lot of research done in this, uh, in this area. Many languages have taken a similar path already. Mm, maybe there are some closure users here familiar with closure spec. I, I, I really feel that this is a very sound approach that is not going to impose anything to the people who like the current way of doing things, but is going to give a lot of flexibility to the people who crave for, for more security and better type safety. We are going to add better concurrency APIs, and I'm not going to be vague about this. There is another cool um, Ruby project known con uh, named Concurrent Ruby. It uh, features implementations of several concurrency paradigms for Ruby. I favor the one known as CSP, Communicating Sequential Processes. This is the foundation for the concurrency model of languages like Go and uh, the Coracing library in Clojure. So we are going to have an API looking more or less like this. Um, due to time constraints, I cannot really speak about this, but it seems reasonably elegant. It is better tested. It works. Design principle number two, simplicity. Because in the words of Leonardo da Vinci, yeah, I'm a refined gentleman, Nick, unlike you, 
Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And this is written in Kaur because I also have a sense of beauty, unlike you, Nick. <laughs> so, uh, most of you are Unix users, I presume, so you know that less is more. And uh, I'm assuming that many of you are Star Wars fans, so you should be familiar with this famous quote by Master Yoda, simplicity leads to happiness. From episode uh, 0 0.5, Ruby becomes great again. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, what does simplicity mean? It means that we have to drop some stuff, presumably some useless stuff from the language. We are going to drop in Ruby 4.0 the following, the four loops as, yeah, <laughs> totally useless. They are not introducing a new scope, so this is kind of confusing, and we love each so much. We are going to drop begin and end blocks because most of you probably don't know what they are, and the, the ones who know, know them know that they shouldn't be using them because this code is loco, and this code is sensible. And there is kernel at exit, so you should be using it. We are going to kill flip-flops. Yes, because the only code snippet using flip-flops that you've ever seen is this one, as there is, this is also more or less the only valid use case for this. So we're killing them. We're also killing block comments. First of all, most people don't know that this exists. The people who probably have heard about those comments probably don't know that they must be placed at the very beginning of a line. If you write a block comment like this, it won't work. You have to do it like this, which is fugly. So what is the usefulness in this? Let's kill them. Character literals. How many people know that this is the same as this? I don't say a forest of hands, so we're killing them. Totally useless. They had some significance in Ruby in the days before Ruby 1.9, but they have zero significance now, so simplify stuff. And we're also going to drop some redundant stuff because simplicity. Um, people have been telling that one of the uh, underlying principles uh, of Ruby is that there is more than one way to do something. But this also means that there are way too many things, uh, ways to do something. Um, in particular, I really hate the core library, um, s the, the tendency in the core library to use method aliases, some common aliases. Um, the, those aliases have, s uh, have fueled so many bike shedding discussions over the years and have, gained, uh, and have uh, brought us pretty much nothing uh, in, in terms of value. I also have been wondering for years, we've got so many aliases, but nobody figured to add the filter one, which is the most common in other languages. So in Ruby 4, we're going to be left with just this, because this is what makes sense, and this is what saves time. We are also going to kill procs in Ruby 4. Why? Procs have no arity check, meaning that you can pass whatever you want uh, as an uh, as an argument list, which is crazy. They have non-local return semantics, which is crazy. And I have been wondering for years, do we really need an alternative, an alternative to lambdas if pretty much every other language has just lambdas? Probably we don't, so let's simplify the language. There can be only one. We're also going to kill the beloved single quoted string literals. Yeah, that they have produced the biggest amount of bike sheds in the Ruby community ever. But we are not going to stop there. We are going to kill a ton of obscure percent something literals. How many of you know what all of those do? <laughs> uh, if you don't know them, probably you don't use them. If you don't use them, probably we don't need them. If we don't need them, Nick, smart man. <laughs> And uh, to, to give you an idea why all, all of this is important, again, uh, I, I mentioned in the beginning I'm very, very excited to be here. As a programmer, I can express this in several ways, like this, like this, like this, like this. 
like this, like this, like this. You probably agree with me that this, that escalated pretty quickly. Um, Throughout the years, I have come to the realization that decision-making sucks, especially when it comes to making trivial decisions. Are all of the, the options uh, that, that we are considering on a daily basis worth our while? Shouldn't we really be focused on the bigger picture, solving business problems, so solving the problems of our customers, solving the problems that we enjoy solving, over having constant discussions whether single quoted strings or double quoted strings are better, whether I should be using um, select or uh, what was the alternative of select? I forgot it because it is so confusing. <laughs> um, but we're not going to stop here. We are not going to just um, simplify the language so superficially. We are going to fix some kind of broken stuff. For instance, and and or are really problematic because unlike ampersand, 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 and pipe, pipe, they, do, do have, they don't have different precedents. They have the same one, which is completely crazy. We're going to fix this. Um, there are too many new happy APIs in Ruby, and we are going to adjust them for this major release, with hopefully without uh, wreaking too much havoc. For instance, do you really feel that it's a good idea to uh, return nil from the upcase <laughs> method? I, I don't know. Th this gets me every time because it's so unexpected. I would expect to ge get some string. Crazy, right? And uh, we are saying goodbye to mutable strings because even JavaScript got this right. So we cannot be dumber than the JavaScript community. Um, and, and in the spirit of not being as dumb as the dumbest facts on the block, we are going to kill reassignable constants. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to have constant constants because this is constantly a good idea. We are going to kill class variables because people have been teaching us for years not to use them. So if we're not supposed to use them, why not just drop them? We are going to fix all the poorly named methods in the core and standard library, which means that you are not going to be able to recognize the library once we are done with it. <laughs> in particular, I've always been wondering why put string is a reasonable method name, especially when the equivalent method adding a new line is named print line. Why is it not puts ln? Any ideas? We are going to introduce the greatest method ever, kernel print, and it is going to be awesome. We are also going to fix really crazy things like uh, the defined, which looks like something returning a Boolean, but does it really? <laughs> and we are going to level up on English grammar. We are going to level down on obscurity. Why would you write code like this? If you can write it like this, like this, or preferably like this. In what universe would you pers uh, prefer kernel percent over kernel format? Uh, and don't get me started on Perl style global variables. Who knows what this is? Ah, they did this looks much better. This, this, yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, this doesn't look much better, but there is plenty of room for improvement, and we are going to improve all the way. Uh, as a matter of fact, JRuby already defines the English aliases uh, of the obscure pro style uh, special global variables out of the box, and Ruby 4 is going to do this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I know what Nick is thinking. What the fuck? We've got global variables in Ruby. Even Java doesn't have them. So we are killing them as well, Nick. <laughs> and um, to conclude, I, I'm going to speak a little bit about the future of the standard library. Many people have been reasonably complaining about the quality and the state of the standard library. 
Uh, you can read this awesome article, which was written six years ago, more or less to this day, and is just as relevant as it was six years ago, which kind of worries me about the future, but also gives me a hope for the future of Ruby, as it didn't die for six years without much improvement, maybe it is destined to live forever. Uh, but uh, what are the biggest issues with the standard library? A ton of legacy code constitutes the bulk of it, most of it updated last around circa 2003. Uh, we've got some famously horrible APIs like NetHTP. <laughs> um, the standard library is rarely leveraging new Ruby features like um, mm, uh, there are so few new Ruby features to leverage. <laughs> like named parameters, for instance. This is a feature that uh, really should have been used more in the standard library. So our plan for Ruby 4 is to move everything important from uh, the standard library to the core library, remove everything outdated, obscure from the standard library, dispense with the confusing notion of having a core and standard library. There are going to be just some auto-loaded parts of the core library and a set of random gems that you would be using otherwise. And we are going to go over all the APIs that suck, that are out of date and so on, and make them great again. This is going to be my promise for you. <sighs> the bitter end, just in time. I know that uh, there is one question that is on the mind of every child, woman, and man in this audience. And maybe some pets as well. When will Ruby 4 be released? Yes. <laughs> it is never going to be released. And this makes me sad. But it is not going to be released because Ruby 4 is in many ways already here. Um, we, we can wait uh, five, six years for Ruby 3, which is going to be a pointless incremental release, uh, which is going to reduce our suffering by 27% and optimize our happiness by 11.3%. Or, or we can start considering some of the really cool languages that have, uh, uh, um, that, that have been created in the past five or so years. Crystal is a really interesting uh, alternative of Ruby with a very similar syntax that compiles down to native code, has uh, static typing and so on. Closure is the best language that was released in the past 10 years. And I believe that even if you never use Closure professionally, spending some time with it despite your primary, primary language of choice is going to make you a better software engineer overall. Elixir is a great alternative for Ruby and Rails developers because the syntax is uh, heavily inspired by Ruby, so it is easy to pick up by Rubyists, but the semantics are vastly superior, the runtime is vastly superior, and we've got an amazing web framework, which Nick already mentioned, that is going to fuel your web applications for the foreseeable future. So, a cool language to consider. If you're hardcore and you like suffering, Scala is the way to go. And you know, the future is already here. It, it's just not evenly distributed. Ruby has fallen behind, and, and we are not the community that was known for leading the innovation anymore. But uh, we would be very, very dumb to constrain ourselves to our community led by some misguided leaders. I, I, I respect Mats, I respect the core team. I just believe that they have no idea what they're doing. And uh, I believe that we deserve something more, something better. And on this positive note, I'm going to conclude. Um, it was an honor to be here. Enjoy the rest of the conference.